name, God. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah, 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 God. We bless your name, God. We glorify your name, oh God. Good evening, Pleasant Hill. Good evening, Pleasant Hill. Good evening. Thank the Lord for all of you who decided to come out and to not forsake to assemble with us today, oh God. And we just thank you for those who have logged into Facebook or YouTube. And we just bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I just welcome you to our first Bible study of the 2022 year. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory. Hallelujah for allowing us to see the year of 2022. I know 2021, we had some, some trouble, some hard times, but God, you threw it all. God saw us through it. We just thank God. We just give him all the praise and all the honor and all the glory that is due to him. For he is worthy, worthy, worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we thank you. God, we glorify you. God, we magnify your name, oh God. For you are the true and the living God. You are the only wise God, our Savior. And we just bless your name, oh God. We reverence you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For you are the Alpha, oh God. You are the Omega. You are the end, oh God. You are the first. You are the last, oh God. You are our present help in the time of trouble, oh God. Hallelujah. You are our hiding place, oh God. As the song was playing earlier, oh God, no weapon form that gives us to prosper, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Although the weapons form, oh God, they will not prosper, oh God. But we thank you for the plans that you have for us, oh God. Oh God, to give us a hope and a future, oh God. And we just thank you. I love the praise. 
praise his name. Yeah, I love to praise his name. I love to praise. Praise him. I love to praise. Yeah, I love to praise. Love to praise his name. I love to praise his name. If he's been good to you, you ought to clap your hands. Come on, let's go, y'all. I love to praise, praise his name. Oh, I love to praise his name. I love to praise, praise his name, yeah. I love to praise his name. I love to praise, I love to praise him, y'all. I love to praise his name. Let's go, let's go. If it had not been for the Lord on my 
answer Tell me where would I be Oh, where would I be If it had And I beg for the Lord For the Lord on my side Tell me where Tell me where would I be Oh yeah now I want y'all to ease up to the mic. Say, if it, if it had, had not been, been for the Lord on my side. On my we got to get out of here. Let's go, y'all. Tell, Tell me where, where would I be? Where would I be? Y'all like that? Tell me.
me by my side. Cause I could have been dead and gone. I could have been dead and gone. Yes, God, yes, God. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I just asked the question, where would I be? Probably somewhere sleeping in my grave. Woo. So God, we thank you for being on our side. God, we thank oh, you for being yeah. our God. Woo. Oh, yes, God. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where, oh, where would yeah. I be? Where, 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 where? Jesus. Ah. Where, where? Ah. I don't know. Woo. Woo. <laughs> I don't know. Where, where would, would I, I be? be? Where would I be? Where would I be? Where would I be? Somebody tell me. Where would I be? Somebody tell me. Where would I be? Somewhere dead and gone, sleeping in my grave. I just don't know. I just don't know. I just don't know. I just don't know. Anybody ever just think back and imagine where would you be? I'm not talking about for the ones who so they super saved and, and know you never made a mistake and, and you're going to go to heaven with or without the Lord. But I'm talking about those who know woo, that I'd be a mess woo, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. I'm almost afraid to ask the question, where would I? Ooh, I don't even want to know. Don't even, don't even want to know. Where would I? Where would I be? Will you give the praise team, our music directors, our musicians, a great big hand clap of praise on tonight? Glory to God for just leading us into worship, into worship. Amen. We thank God, amen, for the prayers that have gone forth on this evening. Amen. Thank God for seeing all your wonderful smiling faces, even through the mask. Amen. And so we bless the Lord for this first night of Bible study in this brand new year. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so with that being said, amen, I just want to make sure we just give you a little word, amen, that will hold you over to next week, amen. Somebody told me, if you don't, if you don't preach too long, you don't teach too long, they'll come again. I was going to say I'm going to try, but I'll just let the Holy Ghost have his way. If I preach and I teach, if they get too long and they got to go, I'm going to just wave at them. <laughs> so I catch you next week, amen. Catch me on Facebook, on YouTube. But we just bless the Lord for such a wonderful time as this. We bless the Lord for even an opportunity to worship and to praise his name. I know some wish they could, amen, but the physical bodies just won't allow them to. And even in some seasons where COVID is still running rampant, amen, and our bodies are getting feeble, amen. And sometimes we just can't do as much as we would like. But why you still have the breath? Uh, why your blood is still flowing warm uh, in your veins? If I were you, I would just give him all, give him all that I can. Why I still can? 
Glory to God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. I just want to bless your name. Just want to praise your God. Hey. Hallelujah. Ah, mama. Well, good afternoon, Pleasant Hill family, and good afternoon to all of you who are out in virtual world. Amen. I pray that you grab that word on Sunday, amen, and grab that nugget and just put it with you so as we continue to embark in this year, you will be living on purpose. That your life will have some sort of meaning to it not haphazardly or you just going through the motions ultimately you would live your best life because God has created you for purpose hallelujah and we pray on tonight he will continue to bless us in a word that will let us live accordingly so Father God in the name of Jesus we thank you Lord God for your word God we thank you for the song ministry that sets the atmosphere for free flowing of worship. Hallelujah. God, we bless you for your hearts and the minds of your people coming in to hear what thus says the Lord. So God bless us on our coming in together that our coming might not be in vain. And so that when we leave this place, we say, didn't our hearts burn within we receive what thus says the Lord. So thank you for tonight, God. In advance, we bless you. In advance, we thank you. Hallelujah. It is in your darling son, Jesus' name, that we do pray. And the people of God said, amen. Grab your Bibles, amen, in your hands real quickly or your electronic devices. And go with me to the gospel according to Matthew gospel according to Matthew. Run your finger all the way down to that 13th chapter. Just one verse on tonight, amen, just one verse on tonight. In the 13th chapter, run your finger down to that 33rd verse. The gospel according to Matthew 13 and 33. When you're there, signify by saying amen. If you're on virtual world, give me a thumbs up. Hallelujah. And you will find these words written. Another parable spake he unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal to the whole was living. I want to talk to you tonight from the subject kingdom relationship. Kingdom relationship. In the book of Matthew, specifically in the 13th chapter, it's really a kingdom book. It's really a book where God begins to, where Jesus begins to talk to us on parables. There's about eight parables in chapter 13 that really explains to us in a simplified way that we can understand it or grasp it so that we can live by it so it's not so deep that the common man couldn't understand it. Sometimes when we get into scripture, we get into dialogue, so well, I didn't quite get that. But he gives us a word that's related to life that we can apply it to our life. Amen, somebody. The quality of my life is greatly determined by those who I connect with or those I have around me. I'm going somewhere. It's because the relationships I build with people help me to mold me into who I am. More so the relationship I have with God based on his precepts define who I really am. I'm going to go a little farther. It determines how I manage my life if I'm able to manage my relationships. Somebody ain't going to get this because you think you're strong enough to handle any situation or any circumstance. The reason I point this is because sometimes we associate ourselves with folk or with situations that will distract us, deter us, and pull us off of our God-given path for a season. 
if you really want to have an abundant life, a quality life, um, a meaningful life, you got to have meaningful, quality people around you. But Pastor, why are you saying that? Because if not, people will make you miserable and you will miss out on what God has for you. Uh, you will spend so many time trying to make people happy that you won't even be happy. As we begin to talk about kingdom relationships in regard to scripture, we as a people allow culture to leaven us or to change us or to make us what culture want us to be. Truth to the matter is we the church should be leavening the world. We should make a change in the world. We should be the one who's impacting the world based on what God has given us. But unfortunately, the world tell us what to do rather, rather than the kingdom telling the world what to do. We are the dominant kingdom. God gave us dominion and we're supposed to be the one to set the stage. But unfortunately, the world sometimes set the stage. And if you don't conform to the world, then folk don't like you. Then you are standoffish and you kind of weird or one of the outcasts. But I would rather conform to God rather than the world because that's where my blessings come from. I'm going somewhere tonight. I would that if I can use a relationship in a natural sense to point to the relationship of the kingdom. Most of us know our spouse and we think we know them very well. But when it comes to church, we ought to know it better. Okay, okay. Can I hurt a couple of spouses real quick? You think you are your wife's best friend or your husband's best friend. But most folks got a friend or a best friend that they're even closer to and tighter to than even their spouse. Now the Bible. The Bible says you're supposed to knit to your mate, knit to your spouse, and they're supposed to be as one, but we'll tell a friend so we won't even tell our spouse. We'll confide. Oh, we'll confide in a best friend, things that we won't even tell our mate, and then we get we say, Well, what happened? You are going away from biblical principles. The kingdom is supposed to be the strongest, and your relationship with your mate should be the strongest relationship, yet and still you'll get on the phone. Child, let me tell you what happened. You didn't tell him. You didn't tell her. But your best friend who's not in relationship with you, but your friend, you shared all of your mm, with them, but you was afraid. Okay, now let me come to church. Pastor, you heard me. In church, we don't share nothing. And we should be able to be transparent. We should be able to be open. And the church should be able to accept you for who you are, not for who you propose to be. Well, Pastor, if I show them my real self, they ain't going to like me. Then what is the church for? It's a hospital. Sick folk come here. We're supposed to be able to bring you in, not just to use you for your gifts, but to use you because we love you. Okay, well, if you're gifted, then, okay, you can get in. But if you ain't got no gifts and you ain't got no money, you ain't got, okay, we don't want to fool with you. Then that's not what the church is. That's not building kingdom relationship. How can you leaven the world when you hadn't even leavened the church? If we build relationship in the church, then it will pour over or flow over into the world. But if we don't build a relationship in the church, how will it? Well, pastor, you ain't never been hurt before. I have, but I stay with you. Well, Pastor, you ain't never had church hurt. Been in church all my life. <laughs> Didn't have church hurt once and twice, and, and before I die, I'm going to probably have church hurt again, but I stay. The hard part with people, it's because I'm in kingdom relationship. It's not necessarily with people, but with God. I don't just jump ship or move because somebody hurt me, because my relationship is with God, not with people. Okay, let me get a little deeper. Let me get a little deeper. Folk would, can I say church hop? Folks would church hop because they mad. And they'll go to another church because they mad with their other church. And then as soon as they get over being mad with their other church, they'll hop to another church. The point I'm trying to make is don't go and pick a church when you're at a bad season. <laughs> Kingdom 
and relationship says, what does God want me to be and what does God want me to do? And therefore, no matter where I am, I'm useful. The Bible says your gift will make room for you. But if you're not in kingdom relationship, you trying to make room. But they ain't got room over there, so I'm going to go over here. And after my gift is used over there, I'm going to go over here. And now you don't have no home because you've just been. Thank you, baby. You have to be an asset and not a liability. In kingdom relationship, what you going to add to me? I got enough folk taken from me. I got enough folk hurting me. I got enough folk who's draw, drawing things out of me. What are you going to add to me? If my relationship is sucked out because I'm with you, then I don't need to be with you. If every time I'm around you, I feel down and I feel out, maybe you ain't me and you ain't getting If you come to church and you go, oh, ooh, okay, okay, ooh, I was finna really go there. If you get upset because you got to come to church, then, then something wrong with that. If, if when you start getting your clothes together, getting ready for church, your mind like, oh, man, I got to go. You ain't, you, ain't, you ain't in relationship. Something, something wrong with that picture. Now, children, it's a different story. Now, your mama tell you to go. You just got to go. Whether you like it or not, you, you'll learn to love it later on. It's going to save you from some other stuff you would have got into. But if you're full grown, call yourself a Christian, and it's time to go to church, and you got your, got to go over there again. Okay, then you didn't, somebody didn't receive that. If we cancel Bible study and you start cheering, If we said we're not going to have church and that, and you get your shot on, something, something wrong with that, something wrong with the relationship. It should bother you when we don't have Bible study. It should bother you when we don't have church because you in kingdom relationship. We shut down the church, baby. You're like, who? I'm going to get to see the football game. I mean, you ain't going to shout that much when we call on the name of Jesus. The point I'm trying to make is when you are in relationship, relationships should build you, should push you, should motivate you. But if it's draining you, you ought to check that relationship. Well, Pastor, how is that so? When I went through a season in my life that God showed me what's called choice. It's a principle, a biblical principle. You can choose to be happy. You can choose to be sad. You can choose to be in love. You can choose to walk away. You can choose to have relationship. Or you can choose not. It's, it's a choice. It's a biblical principle. And sometimes we forget that. When God gave Adam Eve, Somebody think, well, God, God, he, Adam didn't have a choice. God picked him for him. God get, no, 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 no. Read your scripture. It said that God formed Eve, made her from the rib of Adam. And guess what God did? God brought Eve, check your scripture, uh, Genesis 2 and 22. God brought Eve to Adam. He formed him like he wanted him. And when he brought him to Adam, Adam chose her. Adam said, ooh. <laughs> well, really, he said, ish. Because <laughs> she come from ish. Which means, whoa, man, because she come from man. Adam got excited and chose. Guess what? No, okay, y'all didn't see that. Adam could have said, no, God, I'm going to just hang out here with the animals. I ain't had a woman before. I don't need a woman. I don't know why you brought me a woman. I got a choice. When you brought her to me, because God created her like he liked it. Because God knows your thoughts. Even afar off. Adam chose Eve. Glory to God. Well, Pastor, where you going? When we come to church and we have a relationship, it's a choice. You ought to choose to be here. You ought to choose to love the Lord. You ought to choose to worship. You ought, you ought to choose to lift your hand. You ought, but Pastor, it just don't, you ought to choose to open your mouth. Well, Pastor, I don't just worship like that. Well, you chose not to. The only point I talk about kingdom relationship is because we are in relationship one to another, and there's a principle behind it. Know why? We need each other. 
You may not know it, but you need me just like I need you. And the leavening in me ought to leaven you. And if we leaven each other, guess what? Then we ought to be able to leaven, and I'm using leaven in the term of change, impact the world. Even though in a lot of circumstances when the Bible uses leavening, it's talking about um, evil things. Because that's how the Pharisees live. And the Pharisees use doctrine, false doctrine, to mess up folk. And rather than them using false doctrine to mess up folk, we ought to use true doctrine to get folk right. But if you don't know doctrine, you'll just take whatever comes. If you don't know relationship, you'll take whatever comes. The worst thing in life is to say that um, it's not that bad. Well, baby, how y'all doing? We good. You know what we good mean? We ain't bad. It, <laughs> Jesus. it don't mean we happy. It don't mean we great. It just means there's nothing to complain about at this moment. We ain't arguing. We ain't fussing. So we good. I don't want to be nowhere where I'm just good. In relationship with God, I want to be great. In relationship with you, I want to I wanna be happy when I see you. When them doors come over, I don't want to say, ooh, there goes sister so-and-so. That's not kingdom relationship. There's a problem with that relationship. If I got to tune up my face or if I'm trying to tell the usher, uh-uh, 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 we fool. The point I want to make in this thing is once we be a relationship with one another, oh, I love it when Sister Janie walk in the door. It brings a smile to my face. I love it when this person comes in. It brings a smile. But if we ain't happy in relationship with one another, how can we be happy with them folk out there? If you can't, well, I just love the law. Then you don't understand scripture. How can you love me who you have not seen and you can't love the ones who you Hallelujah. So why am I acting funny with you? Ah, oh, I got it. I got it. I'm acting funny with you. It ain't got nothing to do with the kingdom. We are both Christians and should be on the same page with one another. Watch how the devil works. We mad over a football game. Nothing to do with the kingdom. We mad over a card game. Nothing, nothing to do with the kingdom. We, we mad over a post on Facebook. Nothing to do with the kingdom and the devil just making a fool out because he said, you are supposed to be kingdom, you're supposed to be Christian, and you acting all funny. Nothing to do, because we relate to things and not kingdom. When you begin to relate to the things that are in the kingdom, you won't be so mad over some other stuff. You won't have time for all of the other stuff because the leavening from the world is trying to leaven the church and if we're not careful, we'll be just like the world. And since I was talking about Facebook, you can put up some churches on Facebook and it'll just grieve your spirit to see the kind of stuff that's going on. To see the kind of, kind of things that the Bible speaks specifically against and they just letting it just like, okay, well, hey, God, our bone is way. Well, we can love you, but we don't have to necessarily accept the sin or the evil when we know that that's what it is. Amen, somebody. Let me push a little farther. What do you bring to the table in this relationship? If I need an eye, can you be my eye? If I need a foot, can you be my foot? The Bible says, watch this, watch this. The Bible says we are many members and as many members, we are yet one body. When you are in relationship with each other, you can't decide that I don't need this piece or I don't need it. No matter how many times my feet trip me up, I ain't never got to the point I want to cut one of them off. Because I need it. And if it trip me up tomorrow, guess what? I'm going to still keep it. But in relationship with people, you trip somebody up one time. Cut, 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 cut. But the Bible says we ought to forgive our brothers and sisters 70 times 7. And I know you've done the math. Well, Pastor, that's 490 times. On that 491st time, it's on. 
you missed the principle. It wasn't for you to keep count on how many times somebody wronged you. It was for you to use it as an analogy that says as often as they wrong you, your job because you love Christ is to forgive them because you in relationship with them, you're supposed to forgive them. But we start counting. You have 400 by the end of this year. <laughs> you, 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 you'll get out of your little and start putting little tick marks on a piece of paper. And some of y'all will add up a little faster because, of, well, I know she's going to piss me off tomorrow, so I'm going to put a tick mark already. Okay. Well, they, they, they told me about my language, but if it's in me, sometimes it'll just come out, y'all. Hallelujah. <laughs> I just... I'm just, I'm just saying. The hard part is, are you being, I'm trying to think of a good word, that fulfilled. Are you being fulfilled in your kingdom relationship? And when I say for, fulfilled, I mean, are you being full and filled? Pastor, where are you going? If you're not fulfilled, then you're going to go somewhere else because you're still thirsty. If what you're looking for, you're not getting, then you're going to look somewhere else. In kingdom relationship, you got to be fulfilled. You got to know that God is giving you what you want. God is giving you what you need. And even beyond that, God will give you everything that you desire. Because his, his position to fulfill you is to make you full and make you feel. And if that's not happening, that's how relationships get sideways. That's how church gets sideways. I come over here because guess what? They shout and they happy. I go over there because they got a nursery and a outreach. I go over there because they got something. You no, know why? Because the one ministry you are in, you're not being fulfilled. I go over to this church because they're gonna give me, they're gonna help me with my light bill. I go to this church because they got a good music department. I go. How can you go to three churches? It means that the one you are in is not fulfilling you. So the hard part is you got to begin to be, tell God, God, this is what I need. And you can pray those gifts, those desires, those parts of ministry will come where you are. In a marriage, you can't go because, mm, I hang out with her because she know me. But I hang out with her because she can cook. I hang out with her because she can cook, but I hang out with her because she got some jack. Okay, the women look at me a little funny. I hang out with him because he fine. I hang out with him because he take me places. Why can't you be fulfilled in the one <laughs> in the one relationship? Glory to God. And then when it don't have all that you need to be full and filled, guess what? Then begin to express what you need to fulfill in that relationship. Adam went out there looking for another. Because everything he needed was in Eve. Glory to God. Oh, Pastor, you, you, you're trying to hurt us tonight. In this parable, or even in this whole chapter, there are a lot of parables that deal with the kingdom. The parable of the souls, the parable of the mustard seed, the parable of the hidden treasure. Those are great parables to teach us what God wants us to do about building kingdom. And if we're not in the kingdom building business, then we're in the wrong business. We come to church to be fulfilled so we can go out and pour it out to the world. We come to church so that our, when our cup is empty, so our cup can be filled and we go out and give it to the world. I'm going to keep on saying that till you get it. We come to church because I need something, and when I need it because it was good for me, I want to share it with somebody else. The gospel, the good news, it is meant to be shared. We said we're supposed to preach it to the whole world. But you get your little slice of cake and you go home with it. And you say you are in kingdom building perspective or mode. You say you are building relationships. How can you build relationships when you it's just you? Who are you building it with? It's our purpose when what God has gifted us with to be able to go out and to be able to build. Don't wait till it's too late to decide you want to build relationships. Even in family. Pastor, where are you going? Most of us know the story about um, David. Most of us know the story about Lazarus and the rich man. He sat at Lazarus' door begging bread. 
I mean, he said that the rich man do a begging bread. And the rich man every day would see him and give him nothing. I'm going somewhere. A lot of us are the rich man. And we see the Lazarus coming and we won't give him nothing. He was so rich, the Bible says, that he even took bread that we would use for crumbs and he would wipe his hands on them. They didn't have napkins and wet ones in that day. And because he was rich, when he would eat his meat, he'd take a piece of bread and wipe his hands on the bread and throw it to the dogs. And Lazarus was begging for that bread. I'm talking about relationships. His relationship with the dog was better than his relationship with Lazarus. But as the Bible goes forward, it said that on that day they died. Lazarus, the Bible says, went to Abraham's bosom. The Bible said the dead, the, uh, rich man was buried. Somebody didn't get that. The rich man had everything. He was buried. Lazarus had nothing, but God took him to Abraham's bosom. When the rich man got to hell, which is an eternal place as well, he began to be tormented, began to be burned, began to deal with all of the tough parts of hell, and decided at that point, Lazarus, he needed. I'm going somewhere. In kingdom relationships, he had an opportunity to build a relationship with Lazarus. Now he in hell, and he says, let Lazarus take just a fingertip of water and put it on my tongue. But you wouldn't give him a piece of bread when you were rich. And now he has heaven, riches, and you in hell. He goes farther and says, watch, watch the kingdom building now when it's too late. Well, can I have him since he can't come to me? Can I have him go to my father's house and tell my brothers relationship, kingdom relationship, that they don't want to come here? I got some folk in my family who just like me. I didn't tell them. But now that I understand what hell is, can Lazarus go tell him? How many of us got some folk in our family who's just like us, but we won't tell them? Do we wait till it's too late to build relationship, kingdom relationship? And said, now he's dead. You cannot fix this gulf. I can't come back to you, and you can't come over here to me. God gave you an opportunity while you were here to do all the fixing. I said, well, if they're not going to hear him, you know why? They wouldn't hear the word. They wouldn't hear Elijah. They wouldn't hear Isaiah. They wouldn't hear the prophets. So what make you think, if I allow Lazarus to go to them now, that they're going to hear him? You were the best witness. You could have built the best relationship. But because you was afraid of leavening somebody, you just let it go. Tonight, I want to encourage you in kingdom building. I want to encourage you in kingdom relationship. You got to be the one to make a change. You got to be the one to influence somebody. You got to be the one to speak up when nobody else will speak up. You got to be the one to do when nobody else will do because that's what builds kingdom. Hello, somebody. All I want you to know is these relationships we have, they shouldn't be good. They should be great because we serve a mighty God and his name is Jesus and he's given us the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us that connects us one to another and so even when we disagree we can still live in agreement we can agree to disagree and not have to fall out with whoo, and not have to fall out with one another our goal is to change people, not hurt people. So just because you don't see it the way somebody else see it, I still need you. You still need me. We are family. I need you. Y'all you ever heard that before? 
the good part about it is the fact that we have a common goal. And that's heaven. We go in the same place. And you can't get there talking about I don't like him. I don't even know how he made it in. If that's going to be your attitude, then you're probably in the wrong place. Because where we intend to go, it's going to take all of us to get there. And when we wind up in the same place, the same God, the same love, it teaches us how much we should love one another. Just like he loved us. God, I thank you for a common goal. That's heaven. We're all trying to reach the same place. And the only way I can get there, if we go there together. I can see if we had different goals in mind, we can be on different tracks. But all of us are headed down the same road. All of us are going the same way. If heaven is your home, will you just give God some praise right now? If, if heaven is your final destination, will you give God some praise? If heaven is the place where you intend to be, I don't have a different goal. I'm going to the... I want to go see the king. Let us spend our time living in the world. Spend our time trying to make the world a better place. Rather than they did a study on how much time people spend on Facebook and on social media and things of that nature. And over 45% of their day is spending what they call worthless surfing. People they don't even know, they just be interested. No uh, quality in it, but it's just to look at what's happening around the world. And they said if you would take that amount of time and put it into kingdom you will be a giant in the Lord. If every time you open up Facebook or a social media or one of those sites, you open up your word, whoo, I can feel the power already. Some folk can't move without being connected. If they leave their phone at home, they'll quit their job. Gotta go get my phone. If they're not connected to do their little uh, Twitter and Instagram, let people follow them everywhere they go, they lose life. I want them to gain life by gaining Jesus. I want them to gain the kingdom by being in relationship with Him. And if you begin to do that, People will chase after you. After you chase, as you chase after him. So if you want to make a commitment this year to be in the right relationship with him and to be a kingdom changer, will you just wave your hand at the Lord and say, God, God, I want to make a change. God, I, God, I want to impact the world. God, I want, I want to stop allowing the world to live in me and I want to live in culture. I want to live in, I want to make a change in the world. Praise you, God. Praise you. Praise you. I know on tonight, even as we're embarking upon this new year, even as we're talking about living a life on purpose, you're going to see it in a matter of days, the changes that you can make. You're going to see it in a matter of days, the lives that you can touch. And when you don't touch one, God's going to remind you that you missed hallelujah he's going to show you all the lives that you can change all the lives that you touch and then when you don't, don't touch he's going to remind you that you missed an opportunity glory to God we got to change the world even if we change it one life at a time give God some praise all over the building on tonight Amen. give God some praise kingdom relationships building a relationship so that we can spend the rest of our life with Christ that's the best place to be hallelujah on tonight I pray that that word will resonate in your heart that you know what we're all about and that you know where we're pushing and where our forge is for this year hallelujah make the right choices 
because God gave you a choice. And don't let folk continue to choose for you. Choose for yourself. Don't just do what other folk do. Do what's in your best interest. Don't just fit in with the crowd. Sometimes we have to be an outsider. Sometimes we have to be a foreigner. And I guarantee you, when you disassociate yourself with some of those things, you'll see the power of God being exuded in your life. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Just want to ask, amen, as we continue to keep our seats, if there's somebody in the congregation, if there's somebody on social media who don't know the Lord and the forgiveness of their sins, if somebody wants to say yes unto the Lord, the only way you can build kingdom is to be on the kingdom side. The only way you can be in relationship with the Father is to accept his Son. The Bible says you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. The Bible declares that thou shalt be saved. In this year, 2022, it's a good year to be on the Lord's side. So many have gone home in the last two years based on the pandemic. Over 800,000 folk. And we don't know how many did not know the Lord. It's really not up to us, it's up to God. But it's incumbent upon us to do all we can to share that word to everyone that we meet so that when they breathe their last breath we know that they had an opportunity to accept it and even if they chose not the Bible says that every knee shall bow every tongue shall confess and we don't want them to lift their eyes up in hell and wish they had another opportunity we want to get to heaven and know that heaven can also be their own Amen. Amen. Well, bless the Lord on tonight. Amen. Bless the Lord on tonight. We just want to ask, amen, if you downloaded our PHNBC app. On our app, you'll find the give button. We just ask if you just mash the give button. Amen. Continue to sow into ministry to give your tithe and give your offerings. Amen. That there might be meat in mine house, says the Lord. That we can have provisions. Amen. That we can continue to sow out to others. We can continue to, to help in the needed time. Amen. We can do outreach ministries in other areas, amen, that uh, the Lord has called us to. But the only way we do that is by the financial contributions that you make. And so we want to encourage you, amen, we want to encourage you to continue to sow into the Lord and continue to be faithful in your tithing and in your offering for the Lord, amen. Hallelujah. So we thank you in advance for what you will do. And for those of you who may not be a part of this ministry, the seeds you sow, we thank God that you're sowing them in good ground. And we know when you sow seeds in good ground, those seeds will come up for you again. So we bless the Lord for all that you've done in the past, the things you're doing now, and the things that you'll do in the future. Praise the Lord. Give God one more great big hand clap of praise all over the building on tonight. Amen. I just want to encourage, just want to encourage leaders, amen, leaders, amen, or anyone else who may be interested. The school of ministry classes, the school of ministry classes will start again this Saturday at the 10 o'clock hour, the 10 o'clock hour. Um, Pastor Wilson will be here at 10 o'clock, amen, a phenomenal instructor, phenomenal instructor. He will be here on, on Saturday at 10 o'clock to begin our teaching on the tale of the three kings. Want to encourage you, want to encourage you to go on the website, amen, and on our app and go ahead and register so you'll be here and be available. Um, it's incumbent upon leaders it's incumbent upon leaders to attend that class. For those of you who didn't attend last year, because it's a wonderful information that talks about ministry and how you can help to build ministry. And the portion about the three kings, it'll show you a dynamic in that, in that area that you have never, ever seen before. Even in the comparisons on why they do what they do and how situations work out. It's, it's, it's eye-opening. It's mind-blowing. So I want to encourage it's not just for leaders, but specifically for leaders, if you would make sure that you're registered. And then anyone else who would like to attend, amen, go to the app, please register. That class will start this Saturday at the 10 o'clock hour, amen. Then I just want to encourage you, for those of you who have been assisting others, amen, during this holiday season, making sure they have the things that they need, thank you so much. Thank you so much for every gift that you give. Thank you so much even for the prayers that's been offered. Thank you so much because that's what kingdom is all about. That's what love is all about. 
And if you know of anybody else that may be in need, may need some assistance in clothing or food and those type of items, uh, please call the Office of Administration because we want to make sure that we're doing our part to reach out and to support not just our family, but to support the community as well. So God bless you on tonight. Amen. God bless you on tonight. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. Um, just as a reminder, this Sunday, this Sunday, the second Sunday, at the 10 o'clock hour, we're going to be doing our rededication service. Amen. Um, just coming in to make sure we are refocused on what God has called us to do. A lot of folks have been away and a lot of folks are still out there on social media looking at me. And I'm just encouraging you. If there's no underlying conditions and things that will keep you away from fellowship, we're asking that you come back to in-person worship. Amen. And come back and rededicate ourselves to ministry to the Lord and to the things that God would have us to do. So God bless you on tonight. God bless you on tonight. And we look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning. At 8.30, we're going to have our intercessory prayer. At 9 o'clock, we'll have our empowerment classes. And at 10 o'clock, we'll have our regular worship service. We would love for you to be there to get all of it. Amen? But do the best that you can and get what you can. And we appreciate it. Well, let's stand to our feet on tonight. Amen? To be dismissed. Amen? Thank you so much, Sister Fleming. Amen? For opening us up in prayer. Amen? Thank you so much for leading us in our intercessory. Thank Doc Smiley. Amen? For, for taking care of all the things that go on behind the scenes. Sometimes you don't know all the things that has to happen to make ministry happen. But I thank her so much for just being dutiful. Amen? Don't have to ask. She just gets it done. So I just want to let her know how much I appreciate her, how much I love her. Amen? And thanking God. And I know somebody's saying, well, Pastor, I did. Pastor, I did. Okay, I'm going to get a chance to thank you too. But but for tonight, I just want to give her her flowers. Amen? Tell her how much we love her, how much we appreciate what she do. Amen? For ministry. So we so we bless her. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord for that. Amen? Amen. Well, let's look to the Lord to be dismissed on tonight. Amen? And then right after service, amen, if I can see Brother Montre, Brother um, Denzel, Brother um, Jalen, just for, just for a few moments, just for a few moments, I'm going to hold you for a few moments, amen. A few moments, just a few moments, amen, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for tonight, God, we thank you for what you have said to your people. God, we pray that your word will just bless somebody, that we, God, can be in a place where we build kingdoms. When we build kingdom relationship, keep us in tune one to another, Lord. Pull us back together, Lord. Like only you can, God. Bless in a special way. So now, God, as we depart from this place, but never from your presence, hold us in the heart of your hand. Continue to love on us and cause us to love on one another. These are all blessings we ask in your darling son, Jesus' name. It's in his name we do pray. And the people of God said... Amen. Give your neighbor a high five. Tell them God bless you. And we'll see you on Sunday.